Welcome to Smart Life. I'm Derek Latta. And I'm Kathy Buccio. We are here at the Baptist Health South Florida Studios. And for children and teens, physical activity is not only fun, but also an important way to stay fit and healthy. Absolutely. And here to talk about this is Dr. Scarlett Constant, a pediatrician with Baptist Health South Florida. Welcome to Smart Life, Doctor. It's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, academics are important. We obviously, we're not going to deny that, but so is finding time for fitness. And we definitely want to keep our kids active, especially in this day and age. So what do you recommend? Well, I recommend that if it's possible, you encourage your children to enroll in an extracurricular activity so that they have some sort of outlet at, aside from school and academics, and also so that they're participating in an activity with their classmates. Absolutely. And when you say participating with classmates, how about if they want to join a team or something? Is there a particular age where the coordination is ready for them to do that? Well, actually, kids develop at different ages, different times, different rates, but it seems that in the community, what's been socially accepted is to start about age three. A lot of the teams wait for the children to be potty trained. Mm. You know, it makes it makes a little sense. easier, a yes. little more practical, <laughs> so, and to understand commands and to communicate. So usually age three is when that happens. Coordination will just come with practice. But what if you have, let's say, a child who's not really interested in sports or running around, how do you encourage a little more mobility? Well, I think the best thing to do is actually lead by example and participate in family activities. So you don't really have to force your child into an actual sport or an, some type of organized sport. Right. But if you're going to the park together, you're taking walks together, even walking the dog, you're just encouraging physical activity in general. That's a good point. And physical activity, how much do they need? How much amount of time yeah. do they have to do right. this? Well, right now, at least an hour a day is ideal Ooh. just to keep moving. And this is why uh, physical education at school is so important exactly. as well, right? Exactly. But we're seeing less of that more in, uh, know, in these are. schools or something. So you would right. encourage them to join a, an extracurricular activity? Exactly. I think what's happened now in the school system is because there isn't funding for physical education, they do offer extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. which would be outside of school hours. Unfortunately, you do have to pay extra for most schools, mm -hmm. but if that's a possibility for you and your family, I think that's the best route to enroll your child in an extracurricular or a community-based activity. Those okay. are great tips. Now, let's talk about activities that are good for bone strengthening, muscle strengthening. What do you recommend to parents? I recommend walks. I recommend swimming, if possible, mm -hmm. just going outside and playing catch. We can do that here. It's any day any day mm -hmm. we're blessed to be here in Miami with amazing weather so you know some people say well we don't have a park near us okay we'll just go outside walk around your neighborhood walk the bicycle path th play catch outside just right. get outside and get moving get that adrenaline flowing that blood moving Definitely. so you talked about muscle strength and bone strength how about yes. flexibility how about like yoga for children mm -hmm. I know it's great for adults is it good for children? It's amazing for children, stretching and, and you know, it's a really a good form of discipline for them as well. It's a form of medica meditation, right. so to stretch and to use your strength, absolutely, yoga and stretching are, are great. You were actually going to say medication there, yeah, but you know is, what, which is actually is. true, absolutely. especially since our children are more stressed out these days, exactly. yoga might be a great benefit. Exactly, yep. yes. Okay. It's good for mental health, you know, kids are very stressed out as you pointed out, and it's really a good release for them it's a good place for them to just kind of outlet all of their stress and anxiety so I highly encourage it for mental wellness back to yoga for one minute their, their bones are very fragile at that age is it yoga experts that deal nothing with but the children are experts yes. for children versus adults so yes. kind of look for mm -hmm. yoga instructors. exactly now there's yoga for kids there's mommy and me yoga actually the mommy and me gyms and um, places like that that offer activities offer a lot of classes that where the parents can participate with their children and mm -hmm. show them again I think the best thing to do as a family is to lead by right. example absolutely now we live in a very techie world mm -hmm. our kids are on tablets even even school now instead of textbooks you know that we used to now the kids are required to have an iPad or right. a tablet so they can upload their homework. So do you find it to be a challenge speaking to parents as to, hey, they cannot be on the tablet. We need to get them outside. We need to do a little physical activity as well. Yes. It's very difficult because, yes, they come home. They're doing their homework on the iPad, on the tablet. And also, unfortunately, the tablet's been uh, has served as a babysitter. Right. Sometimes you come home, you still need to send off a few emails for work, or you need to prepare dinner, so you send the kids to the tablet and they can just stay quiet, focus, do that while you're doing your other things. So 
you know, I'm not putting all of the blame on the parents, right. but we have to really be cognizant of what we're doing when we're introducing the electronics. Correct. You, you mentioned modeling, that we have to model for yes. children. How about you have children? Yes. Do you have a limit amount of time they can be on their tablets? Yes. Okay. So they have, two, they have tablets. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to use them Monday to Friday at all. Period. Period. Wow. Yes, My kids good. are young, so when you, they don't have a perception of time, and when you say it's we're time to turn this off, there are tantrums and fits. Of course. So I cut all of that out. No tablets Monday to Friday. On the weekends, they're allowed to. The tablets have a t have they they have like those a cell parental. timer where they can turn right. it off as well too. Right. So two hours per day per day. Okay, that's good though. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Now yeah. Uh, uh, before we go, the consequences of physical inactivity. Yes. What are those? Those, well, we can talk about those for hours. Aside from, you know, the, the consequences of a sedentary lifestyle, which is weight gain, right. inactivity, fatigue, um, starting to feel a little bit of laziness, but also just mental health. Mm -hmm. You know, they start to feel a little secluded, or they get a little more reclusive than they would have been normally. You know, it affects the eyes, it affects nearsighted vision migraines, they start to get more headaches, they're overly stimulated by what they're watching, so it's harder to go to bed in the evening, it's harder to wind down in the evening. These are all effects of yeah. screen time. And they get that tech neck thing, they get tech a neck, like that. The tendonitis in the wrists from using their thumbs. Wow. Tech neck, absolutely, shoulder, again, that all leads to headaches. Mm. So And it starts a lot younger now. It starts a lot younger, uh, that's right. Doctor, thank you so much for thank all your you. information. You're welcome. And for joining us today. I'm happy to be here. Thank, thank you. you. More Smart Life after this. You're watching The Smart Life on the Health Channel on South Florida PBS. If you'd like to learn more, please